Hey everybody, it is a new month, February, and we're kicking off the new month with a limited time series. And this one's for Jaguar F-Type SVR, as you can see. It's not a new car in the game. We've had this car for, I want to say, a few years now. And uh, let's see, originally this was released as part of a Jaguar Legacy special event back in the day where they featured three different Jaguars and this was the sort of a top dog out of the three. So if you already own it, uh, this would be an opportunity to pick up a few extra gold since uh, I'd assume you have some upgrades on it already. Or if you're like me, um, on my main playing accounts, I have the car fully upgraded, so in that case, I'm just picking up extra 110 gold for free, which is actually quite a bit for a limited time series these days. Um, otherwise, if you don't own this car, then this would be a good way to pick up, uh, pick it up. It's featured in uh, two bonus series in the road collection section and an exclusive series i guess that's now integrated into the road collections section of the game so um technically there are three series this car's featured in um let's see obviously exclusive series you have to have the car fully upgraded and fully upgrading this car does get pretty pricey and the exclusive series doesn't really pay out all that much um, total payout for exclusive series is only 67 gold and to fully upgrade this car it will cost you over a thousand gold so you know math doesn't really work out I think I, I yeah so um, we'll kind of exclude that for this video and uh, two uh, bonus series this car is featured in both you'll find in elite section uh, one's coupe de grasse and the other one's project jaguar now coupe de grasse there are two cars in that limited time series uh, porsche 911 carrera s and this one and this one is the one that will be able to complete the series 100%. And uh, in order to reach 100% completion in that series, you do need a little bit more upgrades than what you're going to need uh, to win this car in this limited time series. So you'll get 75% completion though once you win it, even if you don't own the Porsche. So that means you'll be able to pick up, oh, I don't know, um, some 30 gold. So on top of 100 gold or 110 gold, you get another 30 from that bonus series. So that's closer to 140. And then the other lip, um, bonus series, Project Jaguar, which features uh, three Jaguars, uh, XJ220, this one, F-Type SVR. And the top dog in that series is the XESB Project 8, which is the only car that can 100% complete that series. But um, I have a feeling you might be able to get 75% uh, complete on that series with this car as well. So that is going to be paying out another like close to um, 30 40 gold so if you add that all up technically you the potential to uh, recoup the cost by running through this limited time series is closer to more like 170 180 gold so something to keep in mind well at least the car will be ready to um, pick up that much or recoup that much of the resource that you put into the car so anyway uh, for this limited time series though they do say you need to have oh gosh 61.5 is the PR requirement they are asking for 
So, well, let's uh, check in and confirm, shall we? So, Jaguar F-Type SVR Championship, earn a 2017 Jaguar F-Type SVR by 100% completing uh, this special limited time series. After continuously refining almost every aspect of the original F-Type, Jaguar created this incredible F-Type SVR. So it's a 2017 version that uh, is apparently featured in the game. So my guess is we must have run through the series in 2017. It's been a while. <laughs> but anyway, here's the breakdown of the total 110 gold reward in 25% uh, completion increment. <laughs> Sounds like they've been just playing they were just playing with numbers. 11 gold for 25 percent 22 gold for 50 33 gold for 75 percent and 44 for the remaining uh, last bit for 100 percent completion plus the car if you don't own it so um here let's get the let's complete it right away and uh we'll look into what kind of upgrades we need to get to bring this car's PR up to the required number of 61.5. The base PR for this car, by the way, is 45.2 and when it's fully upgraded, it does go up to 64.2 at a cost, <laughs> as I was saying. So anyway, it unlocks uh, bonus series Coupe de Grasse and Project Jaguar as I was saying the two bonus series the cars featured in and then as you can see the base PR 45.2 right now let's go to the final cup which is going to be at Suzuka Grand Prix and uh, four laps that's a decent length isn't it and let's check out what the PR requirement is. It's 61.5. All right, so let's check out the, how much it costs to upgrade. So starting with the uh, first tier engine, we got 53,100. So that's going to be the average cost. It's going to be around 50,000 for first tier. And there are, of course, seven tiers for, or not seven tiers, seven categories for these upgrades. So the important thing here, I feel like is gonna be the four hour wait time on these for tier one upgrades. So, um, yeah, 53,100, we'll get that going. Drive train is gonna be 49,400, so just under 50. So, and then body is gonna be 39. Oh, okay, that's a uh, good amount cheaper, isn't it? So maybe it's gonna be, average is gonna be a little less than 50,000, actually, quite a bit less than 50,000. Yeah, most of them are gonna be under 50,000, so never mind. <laughs> All right, let's punch these numbers in 45. 1300 for suspension and then exhaust we got 44,800 and the brakes 34,700 and finally tires and wheels 41,600 and when we tally it all up the first tier up racing dollar upgrade total is 308,000 200 and they are four hour upgrades all right and that does bring the pr up to 50.2 so that's exactly five pr point boost and uh if i remember second tier upgrades are all gold on this one so okay so engine we got 55 to start off and then of course it unlocks the third tier racing dollar upgrade which looks like it's going to be 12 hour R&D wait time on that so we'll come back to that uh, but let's do the second tier upgrades here 50 gold for drivetrain 
and same thing unlocks the next tier racing dollar upgrade and 44 body all right and next we got suspension it's gonna cost 46 which also unlocks the next tier racing dollar upgrade exhaust is gonna be the same as suspension 46 gold and next category we got brakes it's gonna cost 36 gold so and then finally tires and wheels it is gonna cost 42 gold and that brings the PR up to 55.2 boy that's expensive <laughs> The total gold cost just now is 315 for those second tier upgrades and once again that is exactly 5 PR point boost so if we keep that up we would get to I guess 60.2 with the third tier racing dollar upgrades since uh, that's what we have next so let's do that the 12 hour R&D time on these starting with engine 119,500 next drivetrain 111,200 and then body is going to be 88,400 good amount cheaper there and suspension is going to be 100,000 or 102,000 and exhaust typically fairly comparable to suspension yeah 100,800 and the final two categories here brakes 78,000 that's always the cheapest one and tires and wheels 93,600 so will this get us up to 60.2 I don't expect it's going to be more than that and we get to yep exactly 60.2 so that's another 5 PR point boost now this is where things get a little tricky doesn't it since we still need what 1.3 more PR points and uh, I have a feeling the fourth tier upgrades are most likely gonna be gold where available obviously the, there are categories like body exhaust and tires and wheels which we maxed out with three upgrades so um, we got the four remaining categories uh, three of which are essentially dead-end upgrades and if they are gold upgrades then uh, it's not gonna be very good so starting with uh, check out the engine all right it's gonna be 120 gold but that will unlock next tier upgrade so most likely gonna be racing dollar in tier 5 um, then we got drivetrain 115 gold but that's a uh, dead-end upgrade suspension 105 gold once again another dead end upgrade and brakes 80 gold but yeah that's another dead end upgrade so problem here or the dilemma is if we go with the uh, non-engine upgrade then we'll have to get two gold upgrades so let's uh and when you combine any of those two upgrades even the cheapest two ones it's still gonna cost more than 120 so let's go with the engine here and uh, oh look at that the tier 5 upgrade which gets unlocked with that 120 gold upgrade from tier 4 um, it's gonna get us exactly up to the PR requirement of 61.5 so that is definitely the way to go get that uh, add another 269,000 to your upgrade there 269,000 racing dollar then that's gonna be a whole day for upgrade 
so if we get that done it does unlock the final gold upgrade in engine which is another 280 yeah so if you add all of it then yeah that's gonna cost quite a bit I mean as is uh, the total I guess we add another 122 what we did with a tier 2 upgrades which costed us 315 plus 120 so the total gold upgrade cost is 435 um, 110 is a reward that we get back so the net cost is 325 from the limited time series uh, the car is worth 400 and of course if you win it through the limited time series here you are getting the car with 23 upgrades already on board you see what i mean so that's definitely um the most economic way to win this car unless they do the jaguar legacy event in um what do you call that uh, event archives because i don't think it's in there at least at the moment um, and typically when they release these limited time series I feel like that's the one they want you to do instead of the special event since they can put a PR requirement so I believe this might be the cheaper way to go obviously the other option would be buying it with the showcase discount I suppose showcase discount the 20% of 400 is 80 so you can get the car for 320 but then as you know comes with zero upgrade which doesn't get you very far in the game right so upgrade cost is what really kills you um, and as you can see uh, exclusive series is available for this car but it pays like next to nothing compared to how much it costs to get you there so anyway that is a little bit about the upgrade cost and the upgrades that you're gonna need so basically five upgrades on the engine and then three upgrades remaining categories all right so um with that being said Oh, by the way, this limited time series runs for nine days. Uh, so that means 9th of February for those of you guys on the Eastern Hemisphere and uh, 8th of February for those on the Western Hemisphere. Check your time zone. Don't wait till the last day. <laughs> anyway, let's run through the series. We'll just kind of take a look real quick, see if we notice anything that might cause the trouble so starting with tier one we got elimination at Melbourne uh, I would recommend playing the roadblock Melbourne is a great track for playing roadblocks so you don't have to use up more uh, service bars than necessary that'll be the primary reason and also you know I think I like to think it helps train your bots and then we got speed record at Suzuka East, so that's a pretty short circuit. And then we got a cup at Mount Panorama, single lap. So, all right. That's a good length cup for a single lap to start off the uh, event here. And then tier two, we got Hunter at Bugatti Circuit. That's a medium length, I would call it. Uh, and then so full lap there and then we got head to head at Manda Junior course that's a short one a full lap right single lap yeah and then the cup for tier 2 is gonna be at Kota Circuit of the Americas Grand Prix single lap and the PR requirement is 48 so you're gonna need of course at least few of those first tier racing dollar upgrades to get through the tier two so get them going if you don't have them already all right and then tier three we got endurance at Porsche test track dynamic circuit so depending on uh, fairly early on so you can only do so much 
bot training, you know what I mean? So I expect to run like around six kilometers, five, six kilometers at this point. Um, I don't know how many laps that's gonna be, maybe three laps at the Porsche Test Track Dynamic Circuit. Anyway, and then we got autocross at the Red Bull Ring National Circuit. Where does that take place? <laughs> I don't remember. And then we got a cup at the Brickyard Road Course Double Lap Cup with the PR requirement 49.4. So, so far so good with racing dollar upgrades though that is getting super close to the limit of what you can do with the tier 1 upgrades only. So, let's see if there are 11 free gold to be won, right? Okay, so before we get there, tier 4, we got speed snap at spa, that's a pretty short one. Hunter at Silverstone National, so that's a full lap of uh, the medium length international circuit. And then Cup at Dubai Grand Prix, it's the two lap cup, so that's a decent length. And what is the PR requirement? 50.5, and since, the, since they squashed the integer uh, glitch, um, yeah, the tier 1 upgrades not worth any uh, you cannot trade it for any gold, unfortunately, not in this event. So you're gonna need some gold upgrades to get past this tier 4 to collect those 11 gold. Right, moving on. Tier 5, head to head at Berlin. That's pretty straight up. Speed record at Daytona Road Course. Um. Because it's so early on, I'm going to say you probably can pull it off without servicing the car. And then the cup for tier 5 is going to be at Hockenheim short, 4 laps. Of course, that's, that's the title of the track, suggests so it's short. And then PR requirement is 51.5. So, yeah, um, so far I would say I don't think you need servicing. Although, I'm gonna say very tentatively on the Daytona speed record. <laughs> Daytona can be a little tricky. Anyway, Autocross starts off tier 6 at Brands Hatch. Mm, with this car, it should be under 30 seconds for that one. If you have longer than 30 second goal, then uh, you're doing well with the bot training. And then speed snap at Mazda Raceway. That one's pretty uh, straightforward. I don't think it's too one of the challenging ones. <laughs> and then cup for tier six, Nurburgring Sprint Circuit, triple lap with the PR requirement 52.4. All right, moving on. Tier seven elimination at Catalunya Grand Prix. Um, with this car, I think you should be able to reach the first bend, first corner, before 20 seconds expire. So once you can survive the first elimination, you should be able to survive the rest. So that should be fine. Then we got head-to-head -head at Suzuka West. Head-to-head -head is rarely an issue. Single lap. Um, and then the cup for tier 7 is going to be at Leipzig. Porsche test track. Short road, road circuit 5 laps with the PR requirement 53.3 so all good so far tier 8 of course 50% completion tier uh, worth extra 22 gold right and that uh, we have a drag race it's gonna be at Red Bull Ring but do you really care where it is <laughs> um, by the way, Drag Race has been fairly tame. I feel like we haven't had to too much struggle, even though the timing of launch has been randomized completely now. Um, so I'm gonna say, for now, based on 
my recent experience with drag races that uh, I don't think we need to service the car for that one. I might come back having to eat my words, but uh, I'm sticking by that for now. And then we got autocross at the brickyard, road course. I feel like road, uh, autocross at these NASCAR tracks are always kind of on a longer side. Anyway, moving on to Cup at Silverstone National. That is, of course, the shortest Silverstone circuit five laps and the PR requirement is 54.1 so yeah so so far tier 2 gold upgrades should get you through all these and pick up another 22 gold and then uh, tier 9 we got speed snap at Daytona motorcycle course you know what I'm gonna say you need to service the car I don't think that one's gonna be doable unserviced <laughs> And also, we're pretty far into the series as well. So, uh, and then we got Hunter at Hockenheim National. All right, that's not too bad. And then, of course, we got the 24-hour circuit cup. Most likely a single lap, yeah. Evening, which isn't too bad with the visibility. Night and morning races are a little bit harder because of the visual impairment, as you might expect and the PR requirement is 54.9 so obviously that's under 55.2 so as usual tier 10 is where we're gonna need those third tier racing dollar upgrades done of course those are 12 hour R&D time so it takes a while so get them going all right and uh, tier 10 we got endurance at Dubai National and as I said, depending on how you train your bots, you might have to only run a couple of kilometers, or you might have to run double digit kilometers, depending on how you play. Right, uh, speed record at Nurburgring is rarely an issue. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a sprint circuit, uh, sprint circuit and Grand Prix circuit, it's gonna be the same spot that uh, long stretch on the back end of the circuit before the like uh, the chicane that leads into the final corner so that would be the spot to hit the speed record set the top speed um, yeah nothing special there and then cup is gonna be at Monza road course three laps with the PR requirement of 55.8 so obviously that's higher than 55.2 so you're gonna need those tier 3 racing dollar upgrades done at this point and tier 11 we got elimination at Mount Panorama I think you should be able to park your car at cutting and uh, save on your service bars that's my strategy guide on that one <laughs> or yeah you can play however you want, of course it's your game, man. Anyway, we got the head-to-head -head at Circuit of the Americas, National Circuit, single lap. That should be pretty quick. And then Cup 4 Tier 11 is going to be at the Club Circuit. Very, very, one of the shortest circuit. Uh, circuit, uh, the Catalunya Circuit. Right, so this is going to be 7 laps, alright. That's not as long as I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. 56.6 is the PR requirement for that one. And that will just about guarantee your 75% completion reward of another 33 gold. Right. Uh, tier 12, you got Hunter at Mazda Raceway. So quick single lap and then endurance at Brands Hatch. So can you bring your target down to the minimum I think minimum it goes down to is 1.7 kilometers so just over a mile yeah good luck and then cup tier 12 cup is at Berlin five laps PR requirement 57.4 is that what it said yeah <laughs> moving on 
tier 13 we got speed snap at melbourne autocross at spa so those are both very quick events and the cup is going to be a silverstone grand prix three laps with the pr requirement of 58.3 all right tier 14 we got head to head at dubai international uh, single lap right and we got elimination at Hockenheim Grand Prix that one's a little bit wider open for playing any kind of blockade so just race <laughs> and then cup is gonna be at Nürburgring Grand Prix three laps PR requirements 60.1 all right and then finally the last tier tier 5 ah 15 we got endurance at Catalonia National. Didn't we just have an endurance a couple of tiers ago? Oh, I guess three tiers ago. They're a little bunched up together, aren't they? All right, then we also have a hunter here. Porsche Test Track Long Road Circus, so that's a full lap. And then final cup, of course, as we saw earlier, it's going to be the Suzuka Grand Prix, four laps. And with the final PR requirement of 61.5 once again which you can reach with five upgrades on engine and three on the remaining six categories for the total cost of 435 gold and 1,270,700 racing dollars and that will be I guess one day and 16 hours combined wait time to get your PR up to 61.5 so hopefully you guys found this video informative um, yeah so good luck with your racing thanks for watching subscribe for more contents um, I'll probably uh, try to get to these relevant series information videos like maybe uh, you know we can do um, what's a good series to cover here well we can do Project Jaguar Coupe de Grasse I already got uh, started on it so I might already have posted a video for that one and then of course the exclusive series maybe I'll do that one next yeah we got things to do here so stay tuned for more contents and we'll see you guys in the next video take care guys